In 2018, a branch of Italian medium tanks with new auto reloading mechanics was added. In 2021, they were joined by heavy tanks. And now, thanks to a lot of meticulous work, Italian tank destroyers will appear in the game. Only a few of the vehicles in this branch were ever physically built, and some of them only had incomplete design plans. But thanks to the surviving draft and archive materials, we managed to follow the line of engineering thought and materialize these vehicles in-game. Meet the Italian tank destroyers. The Italian Army Command had ideas about creating self-propelled artillery guns as far back as the second half of the 1930s. However, initial experiments were unsuccessful, mainly because of the attempts to mount a 75mm gun on a light tank chassis. Sometime later, the German Army started using the Stug 3. This vehicle was of keen interest to the Italians and inspired them to try creating their own self-propelled gun again. Together with the engineers from the Ansaldo Engineering Company, the Italian army managed to create a prototype, the Semavente M41. Its look and idea resembled its analog, the Stug 3. A non-rotating cabin was mounted instead of the turret and turret platform, and a 75mm howitzer was put there. The main series of this tank destroyer was produced on the Caro Amato M1441 medium tank chassis. Due to this, the vehicle in the game will have low maneuverability but excellent concealment and view range. The transition to the tank destroyer branch will be available from the Tier 4 P2640 medium tank. That's why the Semavente M41 will help players smoothly adapt and adjust their playstyle for the following tank destroyers of the branch. Tier 6 is occupied by the Semavente M43 Basotto. The development and production of this vehicle started when the Italian command belatedly started to realize that enemy tanks had clearly improved their armor protection and armament characteristics. The solution should have been the Semovente M43 tank destroyer. Gameplay-wise, it resembles the previous vehicle of the branch. The differences are in its armament. This TD is armed with a 102mm gun with high accuracy and penetration which allows it to easily cause damage to heavy vehicles at a distance. Its armor compared to Tier 5 has also improved, but you shouldn't rely on it in close combat. In general, the first two vehicles of the branch are classic tank destroyers with a cabin. They are slow with good armament and average armor for their tiers. However, the subsequent vehicles can't be compared to regular ones. They're completely new tank destroyers with unique features that will unlock from tier to tier. Tier 7 is represented by the Semovente Contra Caro Mod 1956. The vehicle was designed after World War II and doesn't resemble the previous TDs in the branch much. This is mainly because Italian tank building came out of hibernation and the revision of its concepts began in the 1950s. American designs with some additions formed the basis of the new TD project. First off, the vehicle received a rotating turret with a limited gun traverse arc of 60 degrees and excellent gun depression angles. Secondly, a drum-type autoloader was installed for a 105mm gun. And lastly, the vehicle received excellent frontal armor that allowed for close-range combat. The Semavente Contra Caro Mod 1956 clearly shows what the gameplay of the following vehicles in the branch will be. The next TD is the Contra Caro Mod 67. Work on this vehicle began in the 1960s, when Italy cooperated closely with German and Swiss industries. However, tank destroyers were generally becoming a thing of the past at that time, losing to anti-tank missile armaments. So it was no coincidence that this TD remained in the preliminary design stage. In the game, this vehicle acquires a more modern look while keeping the rotating turret feature. Now the gun traverse arc is not 60 degrees, but 90, 45 degrees to either side. The frontal armor is stronger compared to tier seven, and this affects the vehicle's mobility accordingly. It doesn't turn into the T95, 
but it'll be difficult to change positions in it quickly. The Contra Caro Mod 67 is armed with an accurate 120mm gun with a drum type autoloader and 10 degrees of gun depression. The vehicle has an interesting exterior feature, a noticeable slope of the turret ring. In reality, such a solution will allow for a more rational vehicle layout. The crew could be in the cabin without increasing the height of the vehicle itself. In the game, such a design allows for blocking damage from behind cover while not decreasing gun depression on the sides, which happens in some tanks or turreted tank destroyers. At Tier 9, there's Contra Cara 1 MK2. The idea of this tank destroyer was inspired by joint American and German developments that corresponded with Italian views on tank destroyers. The concept of a tank destroyer with partial turret traverse, average mobility and excellent frontal armor was also implemented for this vehicle. What changed is its gun. The caliber increased to 127 millimeters, but the auto loader remained. Due to the sum of all its characteristics, the Contra Caro 1 MK2 is an excellent candidate for the penultimate vehicle of the branch. The peak of Italian engineering, however, is the Contra Caro 3 Minotauro. You can see the influence of both American and German tank building in this vehicle. This tank destroyer embodied all the ideas that were developed by the previous tank destroyers of this branch. A rotating turret with a limited gun traverse arc of 90 degrees and 10 degrees of gun depression. Excellent frontal armor that is well in balance with the vehicle's mobility. And the 130 mm gun with an auto loader. But that's not your regular auto loader. Five shells, good damage per shot, 24 seconds to reload the entire drum, and eight seconds between the shots. You can hardly say this is something classic. And if all these characteristics might look strange on paper, the Italian can also surprise you in practice. You should play this vehicle as a regular tank with a cyclic gun. With its alpha damage and reload, one drum is enough to outshoot many opponents. Yes, you will pay for it with the reload of the entire drum, but first of all, it takes only 24 seconds, and secondly, the enemy will never know when exactly you're reloading. At any moment of battle, and in any situation, opponents can't just track how many shells you have. You can start reloading after three shots, so the countdown starts. The enemy counts eight seconds before your next shot, then they think that you're hesitating for a few seconds. A few more seconds to roll out. Mutual intimidation and so on. And only then comes the moment your opponent realizes you are reloading. But what they didn't take into account is that there's little time left until the reload is complete. Such a concept of the autoloader makes the Minotauro an absolutely unique vehicle. And most importantly, it makes it a vehicle that you should always be aware of. Because in theory, facing the Minotauro means always facing a vehicle that will win in a duel. And even if the opponent manages to figure it all out, count all seconds, and think of all the options in their head, they will also need to penetrate your TD. So this is what makes the new Italian an excellent vehicle for close-range combat. It's ready to dictate the terms of battle, it's ready to adapt to the enemy's style, and it's ready to win. In addition to researchable vehicles, the Italians will also have a Tier 8 premium tank destroyer. This will potentially be the Semavente Contra Caro Mod 1964 Vipera. Work on this combat vehicle should have turned into the development of turreted tank destroyers, conducted by the Otto Malara company. Unfortunately, this vehicle remained in the draft stage. One of the reasons was the appearance of a new, more promising project. However, such an interesting vehicle couldn't yet appear in the game. So it's the Semavente Contra Caro Mod 1964 Vipera that heads to the Super Test first, based on which the characteristics of the whole branch will be adjusted while keeping the overall concept. In terms of gameplay, the vehicle will resemble a researchable Tier 10 TD 
but its characteristics will clearly refer to the researchable Tier 8 vehicle. The Tier 8 Contracaro Mod 67 features decent dynamics and armor, plus it has a menacing 120mm gun with a 5-shell autoloader. The familiar gun depression angles of 10 degrees and a rotatable turret with a gun traverse arc of 90 degrees. Just like the Tier 10 TD, this vehicle is fit for combat on the front line. It also features an unconventional autoloader. The reload of 8 seconds between shots and the high damage per shot allow for winning one-on-ones against many opponents. However, also like the Tier 10 TD, this premium vehicle will have a deterring factor – drum reload. But, unlike in regular tanks with the autoloader, the reload won't keep you away from battle for too long, so you can reset your drum at any time. For example, when you realize you don't have enough shells to finish off an opponent, or when you plan to destroy one enemy vehicle and switch to another one right away. In such situations, you can start reloading right in the middle of battle. At the same time, due to the atypical reload between shots, your enemy still doesn't know what you're doing reloading one shell or the entire drum, and when they figure it out, you're nearly ready for a new duel. It's hard to say which characteristics of this vehicle will be final. That's what tests are for. But it's already clear that the branch will have some unique gameplay, and the future premium vehicle will be among the first to help you get familiar with it. We plan to create a special group of tank destroyers with strong armor rotating turrets and an auto-loader. This means their unpredictability in combat, depending on the tactics, will depend solely on you. These vehicles will be set very carefully to keep them in general balance, make them memorable, and most importantly, bring you new and interesting experiences.